Hey friends, I'm glad that you're tuning into this study that we're doing called uh, Basic Training. And so every single week after the message, uh, during the week here, we are posting the message notes. And actually they're posted on Sundays or the weekend uh, for you to use during the week. And the notes that we're doing, I've got it right here on my phone. It's right on our app. You just look under the group notes and you can find exactly what I'm going through right now. And I want to encourage you to pick that up and to start going through this. I know you're probably watching this on social media or website or YouTube, but you can go ahead and join in this study. And if you have comments you want to make, feel free to make them. So the whole point of this is to help you take the next step in your faith and to kind of work through what it looks like to actually do a Bible study. And it's not in a weird setting. I mean, unless your house is all weird or wherever you're watching this is weird, but that's on you, not me. So here's what the message summary says. Scripture commands believers to always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. That's in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. This is right in the notes. Why? Because unbelievers are unforgiven, trapped in a life of sin and purposelessness, and ultimately destined for hell. Yeah, that's, uh, it's true and harsh. Uh, eternal life is the most important issue in anyone's life. Even if a person seems to have it together in everything they want in this world and they lose their soul eternally, they really have nothing. Therefore, the most loving thing a believer can do for another human being is to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And then it goes on. There's a couple more sentences. But here's the opening question. Describe the last time you shared your faith with someone. Was it awkward or did it flow naturally? So if it was awkward for you, go ahead and write in awkward, or maybe you are bold and we'll type in, I have not shared in a while. Go ahead, just be honest here. It's all we're looking for. Or if you have shared your faith, you know, give the thumbs up or something like that or whatever. But, you know, I think the last time I shared my faith, <clears throat> I am a firm believer that my job is not just to share my faith in church to church people. It's like, that's the aquarium, but God says I need you to go out and be fishers of men. So I really do the best I can to just live out in my faith wherever I'm at, whether it's with friends, whether it's with people I don't really know, but I'm getting to know. Like, I just want to live out in my faith. I want to do what Jesus tells us to do. I'm not perfect at it. You know, I'm far from perfect, but I just want to live out my faith. And I would say, Recently, I have shared my faith. Actually, not even a short period of time ago, I was able to share my faith. And did, did that person pray and come to Christ right then? No, they did not. But I was able to at least have a faith conversation with them and talk about what God has done in my life. And that's really what it's about. It's about just sharing your, your faith story, just talking about your faith. Second question is this. Um, what are some things that might prevent a believer from sharing his or her faith? How might they be overcome? <laughs> so fear, I would say, is one of them. Anxiety or uh, I don't have a story to tell. Well, that's not true because if you're a believer, you have a story to tell. And it is interesting. It is. Because anytime there's a transformed life, that is absolutely fascinating and interesting. So how about the... How might they be overcome? Well, I think one of the biggest things for overcoming sharing our faith is to actually just share our faith and to do it at first with the people who are closest to you, who you know, who say, hey, can I just practice? I want to tell you what God's done in my life. And they'll be like, sure. Then just share what God's done in your life. Share your faith story. So then uh, it goes on in the notes under the consider of this section. For God so loved the world, or God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. That's John 3, 16. God loves us so much that he, he sacrificially gave beyond what we can comprehend so that we could be forgiven, healed, and live with him forever if we love our neighbor as ourselves in Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine. 39. So, uh, first question here in the study, uh, besides openers, there are many stories of disciples sharing their faith story in the New Testament. Read Mark chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. To whom did Jesus send, first send the man he had healed? So I have my Bible open right here uh, in the book of Mark chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. It says this, Jesus, uh, I'm going to read 18 actually. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. 
Jesus did not let him, he said, but go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the men went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much that's the Decapolis is the the 10 cities, um, so in the region, his area, how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. So to whom did Jesus first send the man he had healed? He sent him to his own friends and family and neighborhood. He sent him to familiar places. He's like, you go back to the place that you know, and you just tell them, like, tell people that you know. That's the lowest hanging fruit that we can share, uh, people that we can share with. And what message was he instructed to tell? That's the second question. Well, according to this, tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he's had mercy on you. So Jesus told him, you go tell people what I did for you. Just go tell them, tell them the story. Tell them the story. Tell them what I did for you. That's what this man was told to do. And so we went and did it. Let's see. Uh, number three, where else did he did the healed man share his faith? Verse 20 says, Note that Decapolis means a 10-city region east of the Jordan River, his sphere of influence. So yeah, that validates what I said just a minute ago. Um, so this is where we shared his faith, in his region, the area he was most familiar with. Fourth question, where is your sphere of influence? Hmm, that's a good question. Where is your sphere of influence? Is it in your town home association? Is it in your neighborhood? Is it at school? Is it at work? Are you in some sort of a club or a group? Do you have a public platform in some way, shape, or form? How about a business owner? Maybe that's your sphere of influence, how you can influence your employees. Where's your sphere of influence? Everybody has a sphere of influence somewhere. Even if you're... um, well, not even if. If you have children at home or small children, your sphere of influence is your family. So you should definitely be the light. In fact, the family, your family is the most important witnessing opportunity that you will ever have in your entire life. It's an opportunity to share your faith with your children. So one day they will share their, cha- their faith, hopefully, with their children. That's what we want. That's what you want to do is to share your faith. So next question, question five. What was the Apostle Paul instructed to share with all men according to Acts 22.15? So I have to turn to Acts, look at verse 22, verse 15. What was the Apostle Paul instructed to share with all men according to Acts 22.15? Well, verse says this, You will be his witness to all people of what you have seen and heard. You will be his witness to all people of what you have seen and heard. So Paul says, you tell them what Jesus has done for you. You tell them that the dead have been raised. You tell them that the blind have received sight. You tell them that the sick have seen recovery. That's what you tell them. You tell them about the great things that God has done. I mean, the gospel itself means good news. That's what gospel means. It means good news. So you, you share your faith and you do the best you can uh, to, to live out your faith. So then it goes on from here and talks about What is then your faith story? And in the notes that I'm reading right through, it talks about just the different ways that we're able to share faith. And you're going to learn about that. And I really encourage you to fill in the answers. Or if you don't fill it in, just to think through each and every question. Think through how the answers apply and uh, what God has in store for you. So feel free. You have the rest uh, of the page here. You can do whatever you want. You can do the rest of the notes But I'm hoping that this has just helped you to jumpstart your spiritual growth and to help you to see how important it is to get done the basics so that we can grow from there. So let me pray as we continue on, uh, or as you continue on with whatever you're doing this day, this weekend, whatever. And uh, I'm going to catch up with some other stuff. So let me pray. God, thank you that we can be here today. I ask that you will bless and use those who are Uh, doing this study. Use them for your glory. God, we thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your grace. In Jesus' holy name, amen.
All right. Amen. Bye for now.